Mark Bimbarka toured his Mary G show around Western Queensland as part of a health and wellness expo. Focus, darling, focus. Come on. Mark's alter ego, Mary G, has had a big impact on awareness of health and social issues among Indigenous, rural and mainstream Australians. Where I come from, we use this word Leon. And your Leon is your spirit. And if you get a feeling, you know, if you get a feeling not to go down that footpath, don't go down that footpath. It's an amateur band. Sorry about that. This interview captures Mark in a quiet moment on the banks of the Barku. He reflects on the experiences, stories and ideas that have led him to become one of Australia's most loved and respected Indigenous performers. I grew up with the term Lian and I grew up knowing what it meant but never listened to it. And when I never listened to it, I've always found myself in trouble or in some situation where I was affected and hurt. Keep going, keep going. Well, I grew up around alcohol. It was a dominant culture, so to speak, in Broome. Uh, music and alcohol was, was always together. It was cool to be drinking, smoking cigarettes, and playing in a band. I never got exposed in my home environment to alcohol. And, um, and when we'd go out to family reunions and parties and stuff, I got exposed to alcohol. And I saw the redundancy of human beings when they're intoxicated, you know. The father says, Peter, why are you still eating meat? You know it's Lent. You're not supposed to eat meat during Lent. You know that. Here, right, Father. Here, right, Father. No, no, I'm not going to take that. You're our Christian now. No, 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 but Father, Father, Father. You know, the other day you wouldn't take me down to the river? Yeah. And you wouldn't grab my head and you wouldn't put them in one, one put them in like that. Put him like that, name the father, the son, the Holy Ghost. You no longer, you no longer follow you, Peter. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go down to that creek with my kangaroo tail. I'm going to put him in the water, pull him up. Put him in the water, pull him up. I've been saying the name of the father, the son, the Holy Ghost. You no longer kangaroo, you fish. I think because my mother was taken away when she was three years old, she was a stolen generation lady. She was stolen from her mother by government policy and grew up in Broome in an orphanage. Because you didn't have strong family around you, you became vulnerable by the families who were huge. So they bullied. So I, I, I learned that if I'm intoxicated or in a state of mind, I'm vulnerable to be exploited. But that fear made me stronger as an individual and allowed me to see things and everything around me better than my comrades around me. And I realized then that my credibility was my currency to my life. It was all subconscious. It started to come forward into the conscious mind and started to teach me and educate me to, to stand proudly as an individual on this planet and find my own journey in life. Hey, excuse me, where are you going? <laughs> where, where, where are you going? Are you getting the kids? I found making people laugh and being silly in the peer group pressure actually um, gave me power. Oh, where's Daddy? I oh, so you are Daddy. Huh? Eh? Couldn't you go and help with the kids? He's just sitting back. Eh? He's got the naughty dingo. He is a bloody dingo. <laughs> there could be anger, frustration, anxiety, all the elements of 
young people, but I was able to create my own pathway and be able to fit in and out whenever I wanted to. I think that's the key to young people working out themselves. There are two dingoes fighting. Yes, that's it. Two dingoes are fighting inside everybody. One dingo is a jealous dingo. He's an evil dingo. He's a bully dingo. And the other dingo is a good dingo, a friendly dingo, a sharing dingo, a loving dingo. The little boy said, but Grandpa, which dingo wins the fight? And Grandpa said, this is not a joke, by the way, so don't laugh. Grandpa said, the one you've... Excuse me, can you shut your ring? I'm trying to tell someone. <laughs> and Grandpa said, it's the one you feed. That's what makes you who you are. Which dingo do you feed? The bad dingo or the good dingo? The story about the two dingoes is actually um, um, a story I adapted for Australia. It was actually, it's actually a Native American story of two wolves. I, I thought it's such a powerful philosophical way to get children and to get teenagers to understand what makes them tick. People who follow the bad dingo is full of envy and jealousy. And so you know straight away which dingo they've listened to just by what they've done or, or said to you or about you. And I, I think it's a great thing to be able to share with people because sometimes people just do their journey in life and they, they take the challenges that come, but they're not actually focused, you know. Their relationship with your environment is something that we're losing as human beings um, because of modern technology, because of the lack of face-to-face -face communication. The Australian Aboriginal, in their traditional natural state, you know, sitting here in the bush and being able to be so closely connected to the environment, to the trees, to the plants, to the animals. If, if I could bring people back to their own spiritual um, understanding, just, just chuck a pebble in the pond and some young person hears about the two dingoes, um, I'm making a difference. <laughs> My intent is to use the good dingo, the good wolf, to bring this great message to educate my country to embrace and re-embrace and uh, consile and reconcile itself to build a greater place than what it is today. And that's by giving our Aboriginal people the right status in our community um, where they belong. Ron, did you want to say something quickly? I mean, you're, you're the man that, this man saw me for the first time, fell in love and hasn't left me since. The reason why we brought Mary down here was because we saw the power of the character in some of the communities up on the Western Cape and in the Lower Gulf. After Mary had been there and, and uh, put on a show, um, they found the strength that they had and uh, were able to do some wonderful things. That's the royal crown, darling. No, you've got to do it properly, darling. Come on. Shall we kiss it? He's kissed my black ring. <laughs> but when you listen to your Leon, it's the most um, closest thing to this, to the environment that you're in, you know? It connects you as a human being to the land, to the trees, to the animals, but it proves 100% right every time if you listen to your Leon. Listen to your spirit, listen to your feelings, and when it's coming from your gut and, and from your heart, you'll find that um, things always work out, you know? Thank you.